Muchachos y Muchachas, the standard hotel. This particular chain of hotels has plagued my curiosity for the past couple years, but especially last year when they announced that they were closing down the Hollywood location. And I think a lot of like-minded people also kind of raised their eyebrows at this because if you know anything about the standard hotel, it has been a hot spot for years uh, for A-lister social lights, the big names in the Hollywood industry, and them closing down to due to the planned apocalypse. It kind of just again plagues our curiosity. But not only that, it's been riddled with scandal and with mystery, but. Nonetheless, a lot of that has actually surfaced to the headlines, which gives us a little bit of insight to what has been going on in this chain of hotels. So let's go ahead and get started. There's a lot to unpack here. I'm just going to preface with that. So I believe, uh, in fact, I know that at least there's some individuals that I want to do just standalone videos on because I think it's important to delve into you know, what they're involved with, what their character is, and, you know, everything like that. Uh, but so there's going to be some details that I'm going to graze over, especially some people. Uh, but just know that we're going to do some spinoff videos on this because I think that part is interesting. So let's go ahead and dive right in. And we'll start with a little bit of history on this. So the current Standard Hotels is a group of seven boutique hotels standing in New York City, Miami Beach, London, Maldives, Ibiza, and in Thailand. The former that I mentioned, the Hollywood Hotel, and the Los Angeles Hotel location closed in 2021 and 2022, respectively. So the first Standard Hotel, the Standard Hollywood, opened on Sunset Strip in 1999 in West Hollywood, California. It was developed by Andre Balaz Properties. And oh, we're going to talk about Andre Balaz because he's quite a character. The structure was originally built in 1962 as the Thunderbird Motel and had become a retirement home when Balaz purchased and remodeled it. Original investors in the Hollywood Hotel were Leonardo DiCaprio, Cameron Diaz, Benicio Del Toro, Darcy Retsky, and James Eha. Now, later for the downtown LA location, it was in 2002, a 12-story marble-clad building formerly known as the Superior Oil Company building, it was converted into the standard downtown Los Angeles. Now, they renovated it, gutted it out, and they added a rooftop bar and pool and a two-story lobby space reconfigured from the old banking hall. And as I mentioned, the other boutique hotels, those are currently standing. And the thing that really has me curious is that they have upcoming locations to uh, be established, So, which also adds to my curiosity about them closing the two locations that I mentioned that are pretty prominent. Now, let's jump into Andre Balaz because he's a big character in all of this. So at the surface, he looks like this fun, a celebrity orbited type of, you know, magnate. He's a hotelier and, you know, he himself um, has had a lot of scandal within his uh, hotel chains. And whoo, are these details getting heated? Just as heated as it is outside because it's scorching. But don't scorch too much because this guy can help you along with your power bill. This is easy summer cool. It's a four in one portable AC unit. You can pretty much plug it in anywhere and you can keep just confined spaces really cool instead of cooling down the entire unit or house. And it'll save you on your power bill. You can go to easy summer cool dot com to make one yours today now not only does he own the standard hotel chain he also owns other boutique hotels such as the chiltern in london it's an 1889 firehouse turned luxury hotel he also owns the mercer in soho and chateau marmont in west hollywood california and i believe that even that will probably have to be its own standalone video but there's a lot more to unpack here now like i mentioned he seems like this fun playboy guy who again is just just surrounded by celebrities 
And just to give you a little bit of insight, Madonna has stayed at the chill turn. David Cameron, who is uh, part of the conservative party in the UK, has eaten at a restaurant there. Bradley Cooper, who we just covered in a previous video, has been spotted in one of the um, secret smoking areas there. Uh, so they definitely cater to the A-listers. They create these secret spaces and more exclusive spaces. And continued on, he has dated some pretty prominent uh, old flames like Kylie Minogue, Naomi Campbell, Cameron Diaz, and Chelsea Handler. We'll get to Chelsea Handler a little later. Something interesting that I found out within my research is that he actually had Ivanka Trump as an intern uh, when she was just a student. And he's quoted saying that she was very smart and level-headed. Both she and her husband, Jared Kushner, are great people, he says. Donald, I don't know that well. And he also continued to exhibit his distaste for Donald Trump by uh, saying or responding to a reporter when they asked him how he thought about him as a president. He said... Um, that there was a pause and he said he's a terrific entrepreneur, kind of, you know, insinuating that he didn't quite agree with Trump's presidency. Now, I mentioned scandal at the very beginning of this video. You guys remember a couple, a few years back where there was this big, uh, it, it was a big controversy that stirred. Uh, there was some leaked footage from an elevator at the Standard in New York where Solange uh, Knowles and Jay-Z got into it. Beyonce was also in the elevator. It seems to be a physical altercation. That footage was actually leaked out to the press. And hours after they found out which employee leaked it out to the press, they immediately fired that employee. Some additional controversies that you probably remember or don't know about, Amanda Bynes actually got into uh, some banter with the Standard Hotel. Back in 2012, she was actually banned from the hotel bar, uh, the Standard Hotel bar, after she had received a DUI arrest. Um, that happened when in West Hollywood around 3 a.m. Uh, back in 2012, where she allegedly clipped a cop car and she was released on a $5,000 bail. And then about a year later, it was reported that Amanda Bynes trashed a standard hotel room and caused $9,000 worth of damage. Now, there was another weird controversy or... I guess it's more mysterious than anything where Lindsay Lohan was actually accused of starting a fight or getting in a fight with a hotel patron at the Standard. But the weird thing about it was that uh, none of the staff actually recalled Lindsay Lohan being at the Standard um, at all. And so it seems to be that she was falsely accused and she actually... Um, she actually banned herself away from the, the standard from ever going back because of this whole thing that had happened to her. Now, the weird thing about it is that they claimed that there were vid video pieces or surveillance footage of her doing this, but the standard hotel never released that footage. So it's it, to this day, it's still a mystery about that whole incident or the accusation that happened uh, uh, amongst Lindsay Lohan, but she herself took it upon her hands to uh, go ahead and ban herself from the hotel. Kind of related, Lindsay Lohan actually was asked to move out a Chateau Marmont room, or I guess floor. I, I didn't know that you could live at this hotel, but allegedly she did. She racked up a $46,000 wine bill and was evicted for not paying. Um, like I said, I think the Chateau Mormont uh, deserves its own attention, but we're going to refocus back onto the Standard Hotel. One event that I found really notable was the fact that John Kerry, uh, the former U.S. Secretary of State, uh, once visited the Chiltern a firehouse with eight black SUVs parked along the street. Uh, again, Chiltern uh, firehouses in London, and the police w couldn't move them. And I guess Bill Clinton was part of this motorcade that stopped at Andre Balaz's hotel. This is his quote. It says, the police couldn't move them. That's the 12 cars. 
I couldn't move them. When Bill Clinton shows up and DJ's here with 12 cars outside, it's good, but it's terrible. And yes, as I mentioned, Bill Clinton DJed at the Chiltern Firehouse along with unknown guests. Okay, so I was doing a little bit of research on this just to see if I can track down this like night because you would think that it would be reported. Uh, but this is what I could find and I found it interesting. There's not too much to it because of course we're not gonna know the, all the insights of what happened at this party he allegedly DJed at, but um, there was a, a party, uh, no, there was a party in which Bill Clinton, Kevin Spacey and Lindsay Lohan attended at the Chiltern Firehouse and that was in London. So we had just learned about Lindsay Lohan. She had a residency at the Chateau Marmont and then had that alleged false accusation at the Standard Hotel. Uh, it seems to be that she was within orbit of Andre Belaz's, you know, hotel realm, universe, whatever. But allegedly she was at this, uh, this party with Kevin Spacey, with Bill Clinton. You can see her pictures right here. Bill Clinton, red-faced. You know, looks like he, he had been partying hard at this Chiltern Firehouse. And I'm not sure if this is the same night he DJed. I'm just going to assume maybe it was. This is Kevin Spacey. They all attended the same party. Bill Clinton chatted with Kevin Spacey. You know, interesting, interesting connections here. And this is the drummer of Queen, Roger Taylor, that um, Kira Knightley. Yeah, Kira Knightley at this party. I mean, bunch of bunch of people at this party. Anyway, just thought that was interesting to mention. And aside from all of these celebrities that are, are mentioned, take a look at this. Andre Belaz is pictured repetitively with Marina Abramovic, one of our favorite people on this channel over and over again at different events. This seems to be a close orbit of people. So outside of the parties and the scandals that surround the standard hotel chain and the sister boutique hotels, Andre Balaz himself had a lot of allegations and found himself in a hot seat when there were multiple instances that came up against him. In November 2014, Jason Bateman and his wife at the time, Amanda Anka, attended a dinner party at the Chiltern Firehouse. Again, that is the Sister Boutique Hotel in London. And it, that was after a London premiere of Horrible Bosses 2, in which Jason Bateman, he starred in that movie. Now... The dinner party also included attendees such as Jennifer Aniston, Jason Sudeikis, Charlie Day, and their guests. Now, after the dinner party, or after dinner rather, Andre Balaz, the hotelier who owns all these hotels, he invites them on a tour to a really incredible view of London. In order to access this view of London, the guest would have to climb up a firehouse ladder. Now, Jason Bateman's wife, Amanda Anka, was wearing a burgundy leather dress that night. And as you would imagine, any woman who is wearing a skirt or a dress being told to go up the stairs or something very steep and vertical would hesitate about that. And she did. She hesitated because of her attire. But Andre Balaz insisted and told her to proceed. And as she did, you can imagine what Mr. Andre Balaz did. And he inappropriately uh, abrased Miss Amanda Anka and grabbed stuff. Now, once that happened, Amanda Anka told the dinner party group what had happened. And her husband, Jason Bateman, became furious. Now, there was a statement by Mary Elizabeth, who was the wife or is the wife of Mr. Charlie Day, and said, I witnessed behavior by Andre Balaz that was inappropriate and offensive. 
And allegedly, Jason Bateman got in a shouting match with Andre Balaz and spat in his face. Now, Jason Bateman and his wife, Amanda Anka, hastily left the scene and waved at the paparazzi as if nothing happened, but later issued a statement on behalf uh, by their publicist saying, on behalf of Jason Bateman and Amanda Anka, we can confirm that the account of Andre Balaz's outrageous and vile behavior on that night in London is factual. His actions were dealt with at the time. After that surfaced, um, you know, in the headlines, Many other alleged victims came forward and basically said, yeah, he's done that to me, too. Uh, there was one former employee that they redacted the name for, you know, uh, retaliation purposes um, or to avoid retaliation, rather. Uh, she worked with him in the 1990s and she alleged the same thing that he invited her to lunch, then went to they, he took her to some like mud wrestling thing event and he pinned her up against the wall. And again, you can just repeat and use your imagination with what I just named with the first incident. And then later down the line, there was a 26-year-old female media executive who said that she had the similar account encounter with Andre Balaz. He later down the line stepped down as the chairman of the Standard Hotel board um, due to the heat of all this. But all of this is very curious because the nature of Mr. Andre Balaz seems to echo down the line of the nature of the Standard Hotel. So I found this really interesting article that is very short. I'm gonna read all of it to you, but this basically captures some witness accounts of uh, people who worked around the Standard Hotel and give their accounts of what they saw. So this is from The Intelligencer, and it reads in its headline, Public S-Word and the Standard Hotel. Has the handsome Standard Hotel neighbor to the newly opened High Line and declared this week to be the Municipal Art Society's best new building of 2009, revived the meatpacking in a district's seedy new S word side in the neighborhood that once became a home to uh, th this part was interesting to me S dungeons and they call them streetwalkers which I don't agree with that term I think um, yeah I mean uh, just to give you guys a little a little rant just a tiny one th this is why society d just s turns their nose at this big human T word problem because a lot of people just dub them as that when indeed they could be victims of the nature of the industry. And I, I wanted to also pinpoint on this part that, you know, uh, this in West Hollywood, it was a big problem. You can see these articles back in 2017 where there were busts and stings, um, you know, woman wanted in massive, you know, what T word bust. Uh, and then in this next article where they rescued 13 victims from the area, you know, this is all in the West Hollywood area. So um, I find that part interesting that they just kind of mention, you know, where it's home to S dungeons, excuse me. And uh, anyway, I mean, that in itself, the area, okay, the area of what where we're talking about the Standard Hotel. So it continues, there stands 337 rooms framed by a huge non-reflective glass windows. Some months ago, hotelier Andre Balaz, who has cited the exhibitionist nature of this building, ran ads inviting guests to come move into the hotel while it was still under construction. It says in the billboard, we'll put up with your banging if you put up with ours. And here you can see, uh, an oiled woman who is naked um, and has a tool belt and her hand gripping the head of a long hammer. But anyway, that, I mean, that, that part's interesting, right? That was just way out in the open. This You're just advertising your hotel as this, like, you know, in that nature. Anyway, so their uh, staffer, Tim Murphy, uh, found a visitor in the High Line who spotted a naked hotel guest midway up the hotel and there's even some evidence of um, nudity online um, this no longer exists this little link here because I did click it and um, they took it down 
But a couple of locals tell us that there witnessed more than a few of the pressed hams. Meatpacker Ricky Serling begins his day with a view of the hotel from the meat co-op in Little West 12th Street. He says, I've seen men and women, women and women, men and men in the windows, he says. Modesty, lights, leather, chains, everything. Whoa. Okay. So first of all, they're talking about this area hosting S dungeons. And then they're talking about like some weird stuff. Lights, leather, chains, everything, you know, hotel. Okay. Mark Capano, head of security for Hogs and Heifers who has a nightly full-on view of the standard from the doorway of the West 13th Street Biker Bar, offers more details. He says, I've seen women in the classic cop up against the wall pose, only up against the window while their man is uh, behind them. He reports lights on so all can see. And not only that, I've seen guys, you know, wetting themselves in front of the windows I've seen multiple women in the same room picking up and waving lamps to get our attention so they could flash onlookers. Still to come is the standards much anticipated high-end lounge. Its windows coloss uh, are colossal and it reports uh, that it shares the top floors with a huge jacuzzi and co-ed bathrooms. It could be an interesting summer near the High Line. Uh, yeah, and you guys saw that picture. This was, you know, um, a captured image from an onlooker um, uh, probably like one of these guys we are just kind of seeing this happen, you know, right in front of their eyes, right in front of their peepers. Okay, so we covered Andre Balaz, his scandal, um, but I wanted to kind of pivot into some of the scandals and uh, headlines that the Standard Hotel itself has made. Uh, there have been multiple instances that have happened at this hotel. I mean, things happen at hotels, right? But this is more mysterious coming from this clad of hotel and, you know, whatever teams are surrounded by them, because it seems to be that it ends up in mystery. People who die don't they don't know who they are. They don't know who um, uh, are the aggressors. I mean, let's take this first story, uh, for instance, where there were multiple, um, victims in a shooting or there were three wounded, one that had a fatality. Um, and let's just hear it from this report here. Good morning, Lynette and Chris. We're now hearing that four people were actually shot. A fight broke out inside the upscale Standard Hotel here in downtown L.A., and then that led to gunfire. Shots rang out, and four people suffering from gunshot wounds. You can see the clothing there from one of the victims. Police say the fight broke out around 2.40 at the front of the Standard Hotel inside, and then around the side of the hotel. Two victims were found at the hotel here on Flower and 6th Street. A third was located about nine blocks away at the intersection of West Olympic Boulevard and South Hill Street. Two victims were shot near the entry doors to the Standard Hotel lobby that were blasted with gunfire. Shards of glass now blanket the walkway and bloody clothing from one of the victims remains in the entryway that's riddled with shell casings here. Also around the corner at the side of the hotel near the parking lot on 6th Street. That also remains taped off as part of the crime scene. And right now, police say there is no suspect description and no one is in custody in this quadruple shooting. Joining us now live is Captain Don Graham. Captain, can you help us with these details? This is an active shooting that just took place. You're still investigating, but what can you tell us? Um, well, the the investigation is still very preliminary. Um, it sounds like you're as, as, as up to date. With, we have just learned that one of the suspects has expired. They've passed away. Unfortunately, we cannot release any of the information about them because we're not sure about the notification of next of kin. Um, so this is a homicide investigation. Um, the, uh, as soon as we get information about a suspect and we need the public's help, we will certainly reach out to the media for the, for, to release any information that we can to get the public to help us solve this crime. Okay, now this is a homicide. Four people shot, one person dead, three others recovering in a hospital. We understand that four of them, they were all a guest at the hotel, staying on different floors. And now, as this is an active crime scene, guests are not being allowed to come and go in this area. 
actually, um, we don't know whether or not they were the, the victims were guests at the hotel. I don't have that information. Um, we have established an ingress and egress plan with the management of the hotel, both for vehicles and for uh, guests of the hotel. At this time, the management um, has uh, has been kind enough to not take on any new guests, just so that we can get the crime scene finished as efficiently as possible and uh, and get this cleared out for the for the hotel to resume normal business. Thank you so much for helping us out, Captain Graham. We hate to hear that one person has died. But okay, so first of all, how did that reporter get that information that there, there were guests? She, You heard that she mentioned she talked to some guests and that they weren't able to leave the hotel. And the officer completely debunking that, that no, actually they weren't guests. But, you know, all of that is very strange because she obviously got that information from somebody within the hotel. And then immediately it is kind of like just kind of brushed over. But additional to um, this being one of the most mysterious uh, shootings is that they never identified the victim who died and they never identified a, su a suspect. This went kind of under the rug and no one really knows from there. It became a mystery. <laughs> it kind of shows to me that, you know, the Standard Hotel kind of has like a cleanup team. You, you kind of know like how Hugh Hefner had a cl cleanup team with the, the Playboy bunnies and all that. Like this kind of seems like the same thing, essentially, if that makes any sense. And then there was this next mysterious incident that happened where a man allegedly jumped from the roof to his fatality uh, from the Standard Hotel in downtown LA. This is the same uh, Los Angeles hotel where the shooting happened. Um, and it states that the uh, back in 2014, that a man, uh, he was at a party uh, allegedly, and um, there were, or it was like the rooftop hotel where there was a pool. And uh, around 3.49 p.m., a male victim who seemed to jump, leap from the roof, uh, landed on the sidewalk outside the hotel at the 500 block of South Flower Street. Um, his name and age have not been released to the police. I mean, do you guys see what I'm talking about here? This is strange. How is it that in the first incident, they wouldn't release the person, the person's name who died? And then this guy, and I'm sorry, this actually happened a year before the shooting incident. But you see a pattern here. They're not releasing names. It seems to be that they have some insider somewhere. I don't know. This is strange. But he, catch this line here from The Hollywood Reporter. Because there's no criminal investigation involved, it has been deemed a S word, a S word to themselves. Like that person committed S word. It is now in the hands of the coroner's office. And that's it. That's it. That's all they give. That's, that's, that's the entire detail of this. Like this is all they give us. So what exactly is going on here? But aside from these two incident instances, the one that is most alarming that has resulted in the connection to the standard hotel are deaths that resulted from a helicopter crash. Now, you just hold on to your pants here because listen to this. There were three that were killed in a helicopter crash back in 2018. And uh, the KTLA 75, they report this right here. The Orange County's coroner's office has released the names of the three victims who had a fatal accident or fa fatality when a helicopter cra crashed into a Newport Beach home. A federal investigator says that there were no distress call before the crash. Okay, that's weird. There was no distress call at all when they thought that they were going down. Strange. The victims are Joseph Anthony Tina, Kimberly Lynn Wattsman, and Brian Weschelt, Reichelt of Hollywood, Florida. Uh, Wattsman and Reichelt were both employed at the standard chain of boutique hotels, which has locations in West Hollywood and downtown Los Angeles. You guys catch what we're picking up here? Are you guys picking up what I'm putting down? That's weird. Two of them worked at the standard hotel. Both of them. Watsman had worked with the company for nearly 11 years 
sorry, uh, sorry, I'm just trying to get reacquainted here, get this ca calibrated the best for you guys. Watsman had worked with the company for nearly 11 years and was serving as a general manager for the West Hollywood Hotel. That's the West Hollywood Standard Hotel location. Watsman's brother told KTLA he lives next door to his sister in Santa Monica. Being the general manager at the Standard Hotel in West Hollywood was her dream job, what Ryan said. I couldn't have hoped for a better sister. She was beloved by many people, including all the folks she worked with at the Standard. Reichelt, the other uh, victim of this crash, had worked more than six years for the hotel's parent company, Standard International, as a regional finance director. We are heartbroken by the tragic loss of our friends, said Amar Lavalny, CEO of the Standard Hotel International, said in a statement. Our focus is now on the support of their loved ones and our team is uh, our team is during this time. Yeah, difficult time. It is not clear how Tina knew the other two victims. Okay. Mystery number 1,000 million 500, right? That's another weird thing. How do they not know the other victims? I guess that was the pilot or what? The Robinson 44 helicopter they were uh, aboard crashed under unknown circumstances. How? Okay. How? Again, mystery number 5 million 200 4,500,000, right? How did it crash under mysterious circumstances? So the shooting was a mysterious circumstance. The man leaping off the building, mysterious circumstance. Now this. So crash into a home. The aircraft had departed from John Wayne Airport on its way to Catalina Island. When it crashed shortly after takeoff, National Transportation Safety Board Senior Investigator Joshua Calthra said Wednesday morning, a total of five people were involved in the crash, so that's four, you know, uh, the, the three that they were mentioned, including four aboard the helicopter and one bystander on the ground. So there were four aboard the helicopter. The fourth person was critically injured, and um, I'm not quite sure what happened to this person because there was no additional reporting after that. It's not yet... Uh, it's not yet known which person was the pilot, but the names of the deceased, only Joseph Pepe Tina has a pilot's license. Um, as the FAA records show, his license to fly a helicopter was a private pilot was issued August 2014. So we're just going to assume that he was the pilot of this helicopter. Cothra said no distress call was ever made from the helicopter before it went down. Maintenance records were being examined Wednesday. Uh, the aircraft is owned by Spitzer Helicopter and was owned under a lease to Revolution Aviation, which offers flight training and hours, according to its website. The flight that crashed was not part of a class or sightseeing tour, Cothra said. Um, and the it mentions that the fourth person, um, the patient is being treated and is in critical but stable condition. Uh it, that's really weird to me, okay? It's just really weird that a lot of this has become a mystery out of everything. They don't know why the helicopter crashed, uh, where these people, they said that they were going to Catalina Island. What was the business nature of them going to Catalina Island? It seemed to be that they had some business if they were both working at the Standard at different respects. She was the general manager and he was working more for corporate. So there had to be something, maybe, that was part of the standard corporate business that they were attending. I'm just going to make an assumption and speculate there. But tell me that's not weird. Okay, so I'm going to show you something weird about what we just read. So they say in the article, let me just switch back to the article really quick, that this happened at Shearwater Place in Egret Court, Okay. Then they say that they took the victim that actually survived the accident. I'm not sure if this is the bystander to the Orange County Global Medical Center to receive treatment. OK, so we know that detail. 
I'm going to zoom in on Shearwater Place and Egret. I don't know if you guys can see this uh, this pinpoint, this blue pinpoint at the very uh, middle of this map. As I zoom out, you guys can see hospitals nearby, right? You see all these hospitals, and these might be new uh, in 2022 as we stand. But I want to show you something interesting because the HOAG uh, Memorial Hospital seemed to be the most nearest hospital, as you guys can see there. But this is the hospital route they chose to take from Eager Court. You can see that the HOAG uh, Hospital Newport Beach seemed to be the most closest hospital. It almost seems to be around the corner if you just take take the highway down. <clears throat> but instead, they took 14 minutes out to the Orange County Global Medical Center. And that just makes me curious as to why that they chose that one and not the one that was nearest by. And like I said, we don't have additional details to what happened to that victim, if that victim is okay, if they survived or what. Okay, so I'm just going to preface this, that this is, this should be thought about as a hearsay rumor, um, because we cannot concretely validate this, but this was found on Crazy Days and Nights, and you, as you guys know, Crazy Day and Night. It's a, a forum or it's not a forum. It's like a, a blog of this entertainment lawyer and other users post to this. Um, these are blind items and they basically reveal tea on celebrities and A-listers in Hollywood and, you know, big names, politicians and stuff. Um, but this is allegedly an account that kind of connects to those, you know, standard hotel employees that were killed in this helicopter crash. It reads... Over the weekend, the head of this company who had never been seen in person at this particular location showed up in the middle of the night. He had called ahead at the highest ranking person still left at his business, was told to be there for the meeting. He instructed that no one else be there. The urgency was dictated because of multiple deaths that had happened a short time before involving two very key employees of this company. Those two employees were in charge of the account number mentioned in the title which says account number 3791113333399 that account number was established several years ago when the new owner bought out the original owner it was an internal billing account but the bills were never paid they were never supposed to be paid it was simply to keep track of a special group of clientele who are friends of the owner the problem was that after the death of two employees one of the clientele showed up at the business with two very young they say very young women okay so i'm just gonna mm, mm. you guys probably know what that means he said that he, uh, there were his nieces and said that he had a reservation. He used a name associated with that account. <clears throat> the problem is that these clientele were always processed by the two past employees in that helicopter crash that we learned about. They were not always there in person, but would arrange that all the formalities would be taken care of beforehand. So whatever clientele were there would get on with their activities quickly when this man showed up with his quote-unquote nieces who really looked nothing like each other or the man were really young to be wearing what they were wearing calls were made did anyone know about the reservation and then someone looked up the history of the name associated with the account and sent a group email asking about the reservation and included the account number in the email the man and his nieces were not given a room because none of them had had or were willing to produce identification or a method of payment. The man explained that no payment was ever required because it was handled through Mr. Weishup. No one at the company had ever heard of Mr. Weishup and another group email was sent inquiring about Mr. Weishup. Only a few hours later, the cow was made by the man who came to the middle in the middle of the night. Was it Mr. Weishup? I don't know. The person who told me all of this only caught a glimpse of the man that was left or that left the next morning trailed by the highest ranking employee available at the company. 
The person who spoke to me is adamant that the previous owner didn't have a special account number. The employees had been trying to recall anyone they remembered who had used the account number or name when they checked in. One person, several people agreed on because he had been there multiple times using the name was on his A-list account. Mostly movie actor who lives most of the year overseas. He also likes to direct. He is also an Academy Award winner. The staff just assumed he liked his privacy and it was a fake name. It wasn't until now they realized uh, he was using a name that was as a man that was his as his nieces. Okay, it wasn't. I'm just going to repeat that. It wasn't until now they realized he was using the same name as a man with his nieces. However, the A-lister came. He always came without his wife and would only stay a few hours. No one saw anyone who came with him, but it seemed like a given circumstances, he was meeting with someone who could come to see him. The A-lister, a mostly movie actress who is an Academy Award winner, is known all over the world, used the name too. Someone remembered she stayed a week when she was hiding and some of the, her employees would come by and have no idea they were supposed to use that name to see her or contact her. The staff said that the name was used a lot, but mostly by men who had a woman or women with them. Uh, there was one man they remembered because he stuck out. He was an older white man and he would often come with young black men. And he would also only stay about an hour or two. I think I know who that person is and has have written about him before. But no one remembered exactly what he looked like and what he wasn't using his real name. So it was tough. There are rumors that it could be a man behind it all as a big time professional sports interest. One thing is certain. Any trace of that account number is gone from every system the staff can get into. And I'm just going to put it out there that I think they're referring to the last man being Ed Buck. As if those incidents weren't enough. And those are more closely tied to the hotel and, you know, happenings. And those are scary enough, right? People who worked at the hotel, people who were allegedly like party goers or guests or whatever, you know. But how about let's clock back to 2009 where the LA Times actually reported that there was a standard hotel tied to subway gas scare. And I'm just going to read off just a little bit of the top of this article just to give you guys the meat and potatoes of this incident. And it says, for a few terrifying moments <clears throat> in the early morning hours of the recent Martin Luther King Jr. holiday, authorities in Los Angeles were concerned that terrorists had launched an attack in downtown subway station. <clears throat> Several people had been overcome by a cloud of noxious gas, causing at least two of them to begin vomiting and Los Angeles County Sheriff's deputy to experience a burning sensation in his eyes and lungs. But hazardous materials teams were unable to find the source of the gas in the metro station at the 7th and Figueroa state streets. So fears of terrorism began to fade. Ultimately, investigators determined that the toxic cloud was a chlorine gas emanating from a storm catch basin two blocks away. The culprit, prosecutors allege, was not some scary extremist group, but the owner of the Standard, a trendy downtown hotel with a reputation for celebrity sightings and a rooftop swimming pool. That's right. This is the Los Angeles Times, guys, reporting this. Hotel maintenance workers initially admitted to pouring a small amount of chlorine down a rooftop drain. Why would they do that? Why would they? I mean, that's that's weird, right? Why would they do that? But investigators did not believe that what would have accounted for the noxious cloud. An FBI agent who specializes in environmental crimes and who is known for her pit bull like tenacity um, co conducted follow-up interviews, which employees eventually acknowledged emptying the majority of two 50-gallon drums of mut muriatic, excuse me, muriatic acid and chlorine into the drain, the complaint alleges. As a result, the company that owns a hotel was charged with the U by the U.S. Attorney's Office late Thursday with knowingly disposing of hazardous waste. If convicted, the company could be fined only $500,000. 
Um, and that's as much as I'm going to uh, read because um, the rest is just uh, very specific details. But that's strange. What what was the point of that? Why did they pour down acid and chlorine into a storm catch basin that would cause a noxious cloud to overcome, you know, residents in Los Angeles, right? Now, we would all imagine, you know, mystery after mystery, you know, names erased, people are not being reported. Who, who was this victim? Who was he? Did they survive? Why would they take this victim, you know, 14 minutes away when there was a hospital around the corner? I mean, things like this. But who is over this district? That would be Adam Schiff. Now, there have been some rumors, and I'll call it that, that all of this seems plausible to be wiped out and cleaned up, you know, by a higher authority. And that would make sense because... As you just saw, names were erased. We don't know the victim's name. We don't know what happened to certain victims or why th this happened to victims or what, right? Uh, a lot of them directly tied to the Standard Hotel. Well, there, there are, you know, whispers out there of maybe some cleanup that could be connected to a congressman by the name of Adam Schiff. Now, he is over this district in California, and he has also, uh, you know, been connected to a lot of these people, namely uh, in this video. Uh, for instance, we'll, we'll clock back to Chelsea Handler. As you guys know, Chelsea Handler dated Andre Belaz back in the day. Okay, now, one thing that I want to um, acknowledge here, you know, if you haven't put the dots together... Andre Balaz, Chelsea Handler have been tied to Jeffrey, uh, Jeffrey Epstozel. They were in his little black book. Um, Chelsea Handler was at a, I, I believe, a, a dinner party with Jeffrey Epstozel. I mean, you know what I mean? Like all these things, like they just kind of align and it's, it's very coincidental. That's what I'm going to say. I'm not going to say that they're guilty of anything or anything like that because I don't have that in front of me, but I'm just saying it's kind of weird how all these things kind of orbit together. Right. And here you can see where, you know, she's um, pictured in a tweet where it says today it was a horrible day for our country, but we have to use it to our advantage to elect good people in 2018. My friend Adam Schiff, California, has had our backs in 2017. Please join me in chipping in to support Adam and help him focus on his important work. And uh, Adam Schiff then retweeted it, says, all my thanks to you, Chelsea, for the work you've been doing to help Puerto Rico and for your tireless efforts to help us take back the Congress. And it seems to be that Chelsea Handler was referring to, you know, this whole gun control grab thing that was happening, you know, uh, back in the day, back in 2018. Yes, it repeats every so often years, these same patterns. Um, but yes, there was a gun, gun grab attempt uh, back in 2018 where David Hogg, who is, as you guys know, came from the Parkland shooting scene, um, you know, was going off on you know, this, this agenda uh, where he says, please retweet, get in direct contact with your representatives with the number one 872 Spread the message, call them during your work at uh, walkouts or every day for that matter. If you can't speak as well as you would like, here's a script to help you make your voice heard. And this script seems to be coming from uh, a sponsor of the standard hotels, as you can see at the bottom. So, you know, David Hogg being in Florida, we know that there is a Miami Beach location, um, but it's just strange that the Standard Hotels would be sponsoring something so politicized, you know, but is it really strange? Because let's take a look at some connections here with the political parties. So there's one man in particular that is whoa okay affiliated with adam schiff his name is ed buck and you know you really have to wonder why these politicians affiliate themselves with people who are very very dark 
and doing dank things. So Ed Buck, we're going to dive more into him in a standalone video for sure. But because he plays such a heavy piece in a lot of the West Hollywood area, he's worth mentioning at least uh, a, a little bit in this video. So Ed Buck... Uh, was very uh, active in the West Hollywood area, which again is Adam Schiff's district. Um, he is one of the biggest sponsors of Adam Schiff. He has been a Democratic uh, fundraiser for you know years, and Adam Schiff has received a high amount of sponsor money from Ed Buck. Now, Ed Buck himself. He is a now convicted murderer and drug trafficker as uh, he was convicted in April of uh, or actually he was um, he was actually sentenced in April of 2022. That's this year uh, for causing two fatalities. So what is being uh, said of him is that he would um, hire male escorts to his place he would give them high amounts of illegal substances uh, at least two fatalities that are known have been resulted in tied to ed buck and you know he uh, he he's accused of some really dark things Ed Buck is not just tied to Adam Schiff. He's tied to a lot of the Democratic Party members. So this guy, um, you know, allegedly being tied to Adam Schiff says a lot. Um, but it, is this part of a grand scheme of things of a big cleanup that happens? And, you know, I think that's a big mystery to everybody right now because, you know, a lot of this cleanup happened from somewhere. How is it that we can't get names up to this point or we don't know? So which leaves me with this. What was the real reason for closing down the standard hotels in Hollywood and downtown Los Angeles? Was it the planned apocalypse? Was it some other reason? They have upcoming locations that are... Uh, you know, establishing themselves, for instance, in, let's take a look here. They have one coming up in Melbourne, Singapore, Lisbon, Dublin, Brussels, and these are all projected in, uh, from 2023 to 2025, um, the years that they will be ready. I mean, so for me personally, I'm just looking at this at a simplistic sense. Does it does that make sense that they would close down one of two of their mo most notable locations that had a clientele list of Hollywood actors and A-listers, politicians like Bill Clinton and John Kerry? You know, they have this big clientele. Why would they shut down if they're easily ready to establish new locations elsewhere. Now, the Standard Hotel did indeed uh, shut down, but there are two other um, moguls that are buying this, this location and they're going to uh, rebrand it and turn it into something new. Um, now, <clears throat> uh, they go by the name of Ian Schrager and Ed Sheets that are going to buy the hotel with plans to reopen under a new flag, uh, sources familiar with the deal. And just for some information, uh, known for opening the legendary Studio 54 and creating both the public and addition hotel brand, Schrager is familiar with the West Hollywood hotel scene. Interesting. Sheets is a former CEO of Morgan's Hotel Group, which managed the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas and founded the Chelsea Hotel brand. So with that, it looks to be that the standard itself, uh, I just have some funny feelings about them closing. But with the, oh, the, the starter of Studio 54 taking on this and knowing the scene of West Hollywood, are we going to see continual cultures from the former standard what do you guys think? So guys, what do you think about all this information about the Standard Hotel? Did you know this about this whole orbits of people and things like this? 
Um, let me know what specific topics out of this video you want me to make a standalone video of, or if maybe I missed a detail because there was just so much I, I would came across in this research uh, that I'm for sure that I missed something. So if there's something specific that you'd like to bring to my attention, please email me at natalydenise.info at gmail.com. Um, or if there's something you want me to elaborate on, I'm happy to do that. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for tuning into this episode. Thanks so much for your support. Um, I like these type of videos, you know, kind of going back to my, my original roots here. Um, but I'm going to continue down this line. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.